welcome to the North Woods of Wisconsin. I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Jake. And I'm Ava. Today we're going to show you the difference between an old growth and new growth forest. And why it's important to protect them. Right now we're standing in an old growth forest in Land O'Lakes, Wisconsin. We're going to go on a hike to show you the difference between the two and also show you some examples. Come on, let's go. canopy of an old growth forest is a lot different than a new growth. As you can see, there's not a lot of vegetation on the old growth forest floor. This is a yellow birch. Unlike the other birches in the family, this can live to be up to 200 years old. This is a hemlock. It can live to be up to hundreds of years old. This is the most commonly found trees in old growth forests. This is a white pine. This is one of the biggest species in an old growth forest. They're my favorite type of tree because they're best for climbing. The canopy of this forest is very thick, not allowing a lot of other trees to grow. The hemlock, however, is a very tolerant species. It likes to grow in shady, moist climate. The lack of vegetation on the forest floor lets people do more recreational activities, such as mountain biking. Oh, no! <laughs> Here we are in a new growth forest. The recreation in this type of forest is, well, a little difficult. Here, the understory is very thick, because there is a very thin canopy. This allows lots of sunlight to penetrate and causes many different types of trees to grow. There are many types of trees in New Growth Forest. In this area, the most common include the balsam fir, aspen, sugar maple, and paper birch. In a New Growth Forest, as you can see, there's lots of different types of trees, whereas in Old Growth Forest, there was mainly hemlocks. That doesn't mean, however, that an Old Growth Forest is unhealthy, even though the biodiversity in the New Growth Forest is a lot higher. It's just different. There are two ways to measure biodiversity, the species richness and density. But what do these measuring techniques mean? Let's start with the easiest, species richness. It's as simple as this. You just count the different types of trees that you see in an area. For example, let's look back at the new growth forest where our plot was a little valley. There were five balsam fir, three sugar maple, eight aspen, and six paper birch. Now let's count the species. One, two, three, four. So the species richness would be four. Let's go back and look at our old growth forest. Let's count the trees. 14 hemlocks, one white pine, and five yellow birch. One, two, three. So we see that the species richness in an old growth and new growth forests are nearly the same. But now let's look at how to measure density. Now we need to count the number of trees within each species. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, After counting all those trees, this is how we calculate the density. We had 14 hemlocks, 5 yellow birch, and 1 white pine. We find the percentage of each, take the natural log of the percentage, and multiply the percentage by the natural log. You add those all together and come out with the density. With my calculator, let's get started. Yay! 
the new growth forest had a density of 6.03. Using these two methods, you can see that it is hard to estimate the health of a forest through biodiversity numbers. It's better to just go out and see for yourself. It can take hundreds of years for a new growth forest to turn into an old growth forest. But it can take a matter of hours for our old growth forest to be completely destroyed. Here we are in a blowdown area. This is a natural transition from an old growth forest to a new growth forest. This one was caused by a massive windstorm, which blew down all of the tall trees. Because the sunlight's able to penetrate the ground floor, this will eventually turn into a new growth forest. It may take up to 500 years to fully recover. Floodown areas aren't easy to walk through, but there are some positive things about them. They create good habitats for smaller animals, such as foxes and rabbits. This is a man-made transition from old growth to new growth forest. About 150 years ago, most of the old growth forests in northern Wisconsin were clear cut. Most of the white part was sent back out east. Thanks for coming on a hike with us. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. And remember, old growth forests are hard to find. So if you get the chance to visit one, respect it. And have fun!